evening, and today's meeting is open to the public and a warm welcome to you all in attendance. My name is Councillor Alan Hooper, and I am the Chair of the Local Area Committee of the North. Before I ask other councillors to introduce themselves, I will hand over to J. Bell from Democratic Services to read out the housekeeping arrangements. Over to you, J. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Please, can I request that mobile telephones and other such equipment are switched to silent mode as to not disturb the conduct of the meeting? There is no fire test planned for today. If there is an emergency evacuation, please take instruction from the council staff present. The toilet facilities are back through these doors and there's a corridor on the right. The meeting today is open to the public and will be streamed live for subsequent broadcasts via the council's website. You should be aware that the council is a data controller under the Data Protection Act. Data collected during this webcast will be retained in accordance with the council's published policy. By entering this meeting room, you are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting. One final thing to mention, we have hearing loops available. If you would like to use one, please let us know. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Jay. Can I please ask members and officers around the table to introduce themselves, starting at the far right, Janet, please. Hello, my name is Councillor Janet Riddler and I'm the councillor for Stopsbridge and Upper Don. Hello everyone, my name is Julie Grocourt and I'm also the councillor for Stopsbridge and Upper Don. Hi, I'm Craig Campbell, I'm a councillor for East Eccles Road Board. Evening everyone, uh, Lewis Chin Chen, uh, councillor for Stopsbridge and Upper Don Ward. Hi there, my name is Dave Luck, I manage the uh, North Lack team supporting your local councillors. Good evening everyone, I'm Anne Wishaker, Councillor for West Seckles Field Ward. Good evening everyone, I'm Councillor Alan Woodcock, Councillor for East Seckles Field Ward. <coughs> My name is Mike Leavery, Councillor for West Seckles Field Ward. Good evening, I'm Richard Williams, uh, Councillor for Stanington Ward. Thank you all. Before we proceed with the agenda, I'd like to explain how the meeting will work. First, we'll deal with the formal business of apologies, declarations of interest, and minutes of the last meeting. We will then have public questions and answers. We will then move on to the item of the North Local Area Committee budget. The area manager today will firstly give a presentation and there will be a discussion debate and members of the committee will be asked to agree the recommendations of the report. Then we will have updates on the following. The Stocksbridge Towns Fund and Stocksbridge Town Council. Item number two is apologies for absence. Chair, I received apologies from councillors Rob Rice, Penny Baker and Vicky Priestley. Thank you. Item three is exclusion of the press and public. There are no items that require the exclusion of the press and public in this meeting. Item number four is declarations of interest. Do any members wish to declare an interest in any of the items of business on the agenda? Thank you, Julie. Can I just mention, please, that, that I'm a um, member of the Towns Fund Board. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Before we move, <coughs> move on any further, I'd like to invite uh, Fran, Councillor from Belbin, to come and just say a few words about uh, the local area committees in Sheffield. Do you want to come and use this speaker right at the end, Fran, please? <coughs> Hello everyone, uh, so again my name is Fran Belbin, I'm the Deputy Leader of Sheffield City Council and just to explain why I've come today, I won't take up much of your time but as the Deputy Leader I chair the Governance Committee at the, at the Council and a lot of what we will be doing this year is looking at our means of democratic engagement with the citizens of Sheffield. Local area committees are a really key part of that. They're not the only way that we want to get our citizens involved, but they are a really important way. So one of the things that I'm doing this year is visiting all our local area committee public meetings because I want to talk to members of the public about how you want to get involved 
involved in, take, in, get into, in taking the right decisions for your areas and for the city as a whole. So I will be around for the whole of the meeting and if you do want to grab me for a chat when you have breakout sessions and have that conversation, as I say, local area committees aren't the only way we can, uh, you can get involved. But it's not all about coming to big formal meetings. I'd really like to open up those discussions around how you can uh, have more of a say about what goes on in the city and in your area. So please do grab me for a chat if you want to and uh, I'm looking forward to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. Moving swiftly on to item agenda number five is minutes of the previous meetings and these can be found on pages 9 to 18 of your agenda pack. <coughs> so go through them for accuracy and <coughs> matters arising. So page 9. Page 10. Page 11. Page 12. Page 13. Page 14. Page 15. Sixteen blank and then seventeen, which was the minutes of the seventeenth of May, and eighteen blank. Is there any matters arising from any of the members? There are some items on there that will be uh, discussed uh, in public questions later on and uh, in other places. So, item number six is public questions and petitions. Um, I have five. Yeah, I have five. Um, three are written questions which we've received and I will read them out uh, and then we'll move over to um, two of the members here who want, wish, to, wish to speak. So the first one that we've got is from Dennis Patton uh, and he's asking two questions. Dennis is asking, why are Sheffield City Council painting white lines on potholes in Chapel Town? Fix the holes and ruts, please. And number two is Blackburn Valley Trail, which is Transpanel Trail. When will it be finished? 13 years has passed and still not completed. Smithywood Business Park is the main problem. The Duke of May Norfolk is making a lot from us. Make him pay. And that's from uh, Dennis Patton. Up to date, we've sent that off, but we haven't had a reply. Uh, when we do receive a reply, we will... Uh, answer Dennis's and make sure he gets the two answers to his questions. That was the first question, written question. The second one is from Mr. Bill Darton of Grenoside. Um, I'll read it out. I ask that you make representation regarding the low road that leads from Grenoside up to the crematorium. The speed limit past the crematorium is 60 miles an hour for a narrow road. It adds danger to anyone who has to walk to the crematorium as there is no pavement from outside the corn calf up to the crematorium. There are traffic calming initiatives on Norfolk Hill and Stephen Lane in the village. Is it possible if a pavement cannot be provided that traffic calming initiatives be introduced and a speed limit reduction to 30 mile an hour? I have put this online inquiry regarding it twice in the last couple of years after witnessing a couple of near misses and indeed there was an incident uh, last Saturday when an air ambulance was required uh, regards Bill Darton. Uh, we have had a, a reply from Highways. Uh, basically, um, they're saying we've had a similar request in the past and unfortunately we would not be able to reduce the speed limit here. Uh, they go on to mention various things and criteria and uh, how road speeds and everything's assessed. They go on to mention um, the police and um, speed cameras, etc., etc. Um, I don't know if any, any members wish to comment, but um, I'm not entirely happy with the response 
Uh, they just dismissed it as a, a speeding issue, and I think that particular part of the road, if anyone knows it, is more than a speeding issue, uh, with there being no payment uh, and people walking to and from the crematorium. Uh, it, it's not good. Um, so I think some other action could be undertaken, I think, uh, certainly uh, as chair of the North Lack, I will be writing back along with Dave to, to see what else we can put into place, uh, including perhaps road signage uh, and, and other measures. Coming over from Outerbridge, um, when you get to over the top of, of Jawbone there, the road splits as you come into Gunnerside. Straight down is immediately a 30 mile an hour, whereas you go down past the crematorium and it's still unrestricted till you get to Crosshouse Road and the Con Car. So I think, I think we could we'll look, look at various things. I think various agencies, including the police, need to be involved. So has any other councillors got comment? Mike and then Richard, please. Yeah, I support your views, Chair, on this one. Um, Unfortunately, when the crematorium was built, the road was no pavements, and now it needs pavements because people do walk the crematorium, they're walking on the road, it's a narrow road, and it's extremely busy. So I do think we need a follow up on this. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I uh, share yours and Mike's sentiments completely. It's incredibly frustrating, I think, for residents uh, when it is so obvious that there are accident hotspots and just because there hasn't been an accident um, the authorities in this case I guess it's Amy really um, can't, can't prioritise things it is difficult because it's expensive to do anything on roads um, and there are a lot of them in the rural communities of Stannington and Stocksbridge there are a lot of small roads cars use them as uh, cut throughs they speed, pay no attention at all to the conditions of the road I mean the number on the sign is only one marker of speed. It's actually, is it safe to drive at that speed? And it's, it's an offence to not drive safely. Um, I think we just have to put pressure. And I think that one thing I would say, please report anything. If it's an accident, that's reportable. But also near misses, just report them. Because ultimately, it's a, it's a, it's a numbers game. And the more reports you have about something happening further up the, the, the ladder it goes and you might get something done. But it's not a really very satisfactory system. Just to really the speed of traffic. The, the, the potholes was the previous one. But can I, can I speak on that one? Yeah, but I thought, white, white <laughs> I thought it was yellow there. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, well, I just wanted to thank um, that, that uh, gentleman for submitting the question. Um, it's what the, the state of the roads around Chapel Town, particularly the, the two roundabouts in the centre of Chapel Town, is one of the number one issues that I get emails and messages about and that people raise with me on the doorstep. Um, and I've been chasing Amy about this and a whole load of other road repair issues since January and then back into last year. And I have to say, on record now, in this, this webcast streamed meeting, that I think it's an absolute disgrace. The standard of work that Amy are doing, but also the response that they're giving. Because to me, as an elected member of the City Council, as well as to my constituents, they keep coming back and have done since January, saying this will be repaired within... First it was six weeks, then six weeks went, and then it was eight weeks. The current standard fob-off reply seems to be work will be done within 12 weeks, and there doesn't seem to be any way of getting them to act any more quickly. So I, I will be taking this up with the Waste and Street Scene Committee of the Council that are responsible, because if they can't do better than this, they ought to be being renamed as the Waste of Space and Street Scene Committee. This is what happens when we subcontract out essential council services to profit-making um, international companies. The accountability is gone. And I know that members of our communities, quite rightly, hold us as elected members responsible for those failings. And I would really, really like to see those subcontracted providers actually step up and do what they're being paid 
or ready to do, so that us as elected members can get on with tackling some of the massive, massive issues that are facing our city, like sorting out public transport and dealing with the cost of living crisis and delivering decent public services across the board. So I think anybody who's thinking that, that, that this is a problem, um, I would just like to say that you know, we hear what you're saying and we're working really hard to tackle it and it's not good enough. Thank, thanks, Craig. Um, I have other members want to ask questions regarding this, but what you've just brought up is our next question. So we'll start again. <laughs> uh, this is a question from uh, Lee Rebel, and it's in five parts. Um, questions I would like to submit for the next LAC meeting. Um, he's asking about the roundabouts at Chapel Town. Um, Miriam Capes, the MP, has been informed that they were addressed in August this year, um, moving on and on. Uh, so there's the roundabouts at Chapel Town, which is bringing up, and like yourself, both East and West councillors have, have had this on the agenda for perhaps six, nine, twelve months, uh, and I know they want to speak regarding this. The second part of his question is remedial work at the juncture of Station Road and the roundabouts at Chapel Town. The third one, again, is, is the roundabouts at, at Chapel Town. When will they be addressed? Uh, other roads that I'm aware of are travelling regularly. State of disrepair. One is Lownside, from the top of the hill down through Marketplace Chapel Town, where the first roundabout is. Uh, and another question is Blackburn Drive, leading to the Burncross Road end. And finally, uh, a local issue here is Hall House Lane, uh, leading to the junction of Manchester Road. He says, is it Sheffield City Council that is responsible for carrying out the repair work on the road, or is it the contractor, Amy, who did the resurface in a few years? If it is the latter, don't Sheffield City Council have any powers to enforce the work that is carried out in a timely fashion, as we are taking 12 months or more, that there have been in such a state. Thank you. Um, like the previous question, we have had a response. This one is from Amy. Uh, I think it's quite a long one. I'll try and read as much as I can without, without lo losing the, the gist of it. Uh, thank you for your inquiry, which was received on the 15th of June, regarding the roads in Chapel Town. Please note that the correspondent sent to Miriam Capes on the Kate's on the 17th of May refers to the outstanding repairs road in Chapel Town, including the two roundabouts, which we expected to be completed by the end of August 2023. We conf confirm that the roundabouts and Lownside are not going to be resurfaced during 2023. However, we will be resurfacing a section of Station Road at the junction with the roundabout this year. In addition, we can confirm that the resurfacing of Blackburn Drive at the junction with Burncross Road will be completed during June 2023. That has been undertaken perhaps about two weeks ago, really, it was in June. With regards to other roads in Chapel Town, we can advise that all roads in Sheffield are subject to regular condition surveys, which are undertaken every two years, and in addition, regular routine safety inspections also take place. During the condition surveys, issues identified are added to our bespoke software system, which creates a condition score. Under the streets ahead contract, the condition scores mean that when an average condition of a given road is selection fall below preset condition scores, any failures must be addressed. However, as the data is only run once a year and the condition service into every two years, there is often delay before roads or section of roads are eligible for work to be undertaken. This is often why interim repairs are carried out to ensure the road remains in a safe condition for all users. That deals with the issue in, in Chapel Town. Uh, moving on to the conditions of the carriageway on Hull House Lane, Please be advised that a defect to a Yorkshire water asset is believed to be the cause of this deterioration. We are liaising with Yorkshire Water to resolve the issue by resurfing the road. Uh, moving on, Amy are responsible for carrying out repairs to the network. We are self 
We are self-monitoring contract and work against title deadline to ensure actionable defects are remedied within the set time frame. Due to an increasing workload, together with inclement weather we experienced in March this year, unfortunately all our highway works have been significantly delayed. Uh, we hope this, this clarifies our position. Uh, kind regards, customer service is Amy. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I'll deal with the Chapel Town ones first, and then I know that Councillor Grocott wants to speak about Hull House Lane and add to that. So. If we deal with the Chapel Town issues first, uh, and before we even start, I, I'm not happy with the response, and I think it's where we go from here and take this forward. So I think it's, is it Mike and then Alan, please? Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, the Chapel Town problem is, is severe, but the, Amy are looking at the moment at remodelling that whole pair of roundabouts, in other words looking at different systems rather than roundabouts to get rid of the problem that they've got apparently they can't resurface it all in one go, and all they've done is put two sweeps round and then filled it and it's all come out with the frost and, and winter and left a, a ring round the middle of the roundabout which is the real problem So, but I think they should be getting on a, and at least affecting a decent repair to see us fall before some long term solutions in place I just wanted to pick up on um, Amy and, and the mention that they're a subcontractor, they aren't a subcontractor. This is a, what's called a private finance initiative. So it's a two, two billion pound contract over 25 years, half funded by the government, half funded by the uh, private sector. So it is not funded by ratepayers. And Amy are the contractor who've got the 25 year contract and they have the responsibility in the early years of completely resurfacing the roads and then they have to maintain them thereafter. So this has been a problem, there's no doubt. Some of these roads are not up to scratch and they're failing and we've also been coupled with a pretty bad winter. So we've had a lot of rain followed by frost and all these roads where the surface has been lifted up has been caused by frost damage and they've got massive backlog to take on board. So, Things are taking a long time. We want them to get speeded up and we need to chase them, but it will take some time to resolve all the issues that are there. And they're starting with the worst. So Blackman Drive's been done, because I saw it the other day. Um, we just need them to go on with Chapel Town and get it sorted out. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Just before I speak, yeah, I, I think both East and West Ecclesfield Council, the six of us, have been receiving issues about um, these roundabouts in the states of Rhodes. Um, I, I certainly had one where they, they, they promised that they was going to resurface the roundabouts at the end of March. And I think both other councillors have had that, but uh, time has gone and passed and it keeps being deferred backwards and backwards and forwards. So, yeah, we, we need to address that and... Uh, However we take this forward, we, we, we need to move it forward and let the public of Chapel Town and, and surrounds know what's happening. Otherwise, we're just going to continue getting uh, requests and, and uh, advice and information of when, when it's actually going to be undertaken. I'll let Julie come in and speak about uh, Whole House Road because she's got some more information than, than we've got back from Amy. Thank you. Julie. Thank you, Chair. I, I think there's a number of points um, I would actually like to make, and I concur with everything that Craig has just said in relation to the contract and the frustrations. It's extremely, extremely annoying as a local councillor, as a resident in Stocksbridge, that I, like the rest of the residents in here, have been cycling and walking um, and driving over a road that is in an absolutely dreadful state for the best part of eight months. Over the last eight months, I cannot tell you how many meetings I've had on that road. I brought out the executive director of the um, council who is responsible for it to take a look at not only that road, but other roads in the area, because they are not being um, repaired to anything near what is a reasonable standard. And as soon as they are repaired, they are failing again. Any of you who live locally knows that they are out here constantly filling, for example, potholes on Lanny Hill. It's absolutely outrageous, and something does need doing about that. Um, 
Janet and myself have invited the um, Waste and Street Scene Committee to come and have a look because they are the committee that is responsible. So we're going to make sure that the uh, members of that committee come out and take a look as well because something does need doing, not just about the state of our roads but about the standard of the repairs that are being undertaken. The condition surveys that were mentioned in the um, report are an absolute joke. I have got a part of a road where a condition survey was done. They came and they repaired three sections of the road and left two sections undone because the condition survey that was done two years previously said those parts were okay. But by the time they came to repair the road, guess what? They were actually the worst bits of the road and didn't get done. And that was because they rely on old information from old condition surveys and then now they're having to come out again. So how their business model is working when they are coming backwards and forwards in, they could have done the whole road and they won't. And I'm having that exact same battle with them now in relation to Car Road because their condition surveys say that only part of Car Road needs resurfacing. Anyone who knows it knows that Car Road is an absolute disgrace. So there's some real... Um, battles that we need to have and um, we are doing everything that we can to get them sorted out. In relation to Hurl House Lane, I actually received an email this tea time um, from Amy um, saying, and I'll read it to you, rest assured that an agreement has been reached between Streets Ahead and Yorkshire Water. However, this is subject to payment from Yorkshire Water's management team. Unfortunately, um, we do not have a time frame for this work to begin and this work will not be scheduled until payment has been received. Um, so clearly um, things have been sorted out in terms of who is responsible for what but now we're into the thorny issue of payment. So um, I will be taking that up with the Executive Director tomorrow to make sure that we get on and get this work done because it's been going on for far, far too long and it's no way to treat um, the local residents whatsoever. So, um, yes, we all know that it is a real pain. And as Craig has you know, said rather eloquently, we are trying really hard to get things done. And it is as frustrating for us as it is for all of you, but that doesn't make it okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Julie. Uh, would you like to make a comment? Introduce the mic, please. Thanks a lot. But, yeah, Lee Revel will pose some of those questions. Uh, I more or less anticipated that there was a good chance there were people already that had brought this up and, and mentioned these problems and it seems as though you're you know, quite a way across it already. Uh, I, I mean, I just find it unbelievable how bad the roads are that somebody hasn't even been injured, cyclists or motorcyclists, especially around the Chapel Town roundabout area with the deep rutting that somebody hasn't sort of come, come foul to that and, and, and been quite seriously injured from it. But, I mean, I've had another response from them that said that the work is looking at being done sometime next year, but no schedule as to when exactly next year. But now, uh, Councillor Lee has just said it sounds as though that they're going to be remodelling that, and that's potentially why that the aunt's answered that question as well. But, uh, yeah, it's just unbelievable how they can just leave it and, and, and not address it, and nothing seems to be able to be done to enforce anything that it needs to be that it needs to be addressed but thank you for uh, obviously listening and already being on that thank you yeah, I think we're all listening but we want action um, for me the response that, that Amy has given falls short of what I and the LAC expects uh, and I think we need to move it forward in whichever way um, yeah. I did respond back to that in the exact same way as you said said I'm sorry I just don't find that a good enough answer to what the question that I'm asking really so they have contacted me again since and said they are now escalating my complaint to the next level but I'm sure it's probably gone through that already by yourselves and other people that are affected by this as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thanks very much yeah I see it, it, it's, it's not for me it's not satisfactory um it doesn't address the question and like I think you both said we need some time scales on this uh, that are going to be met uh, and not just dragged on and on and on and on. Well, 
contract at not getting things done as they should be done. They've got a 25-year contract. Obviously, that was they were awarded that contract by making certain promises. Are they keeping to their contract? Is the is two-year time scale part of their contract? You know, are they allowed to do that? Uh, I'm not sure that we, we can uh, address that question. Um, the contract wants looking into. Yeah, yeah. Meeting yeah. what they said they would do. Um, so, yeah. Um, they awarded the contract to keep the roads of Sheffield to a, a suitable standard, and they've broken the contract. So, why are they still trading? Yeah. <laughs> if, if I can move it forward, so my, my suggestion to, to the committee is that we respond to Amy. Uh, saying this is not, not good enough uh, and move it forward that way and saying why it's not good enough for us and can they respond fully with various things uh, and also I'd like this to be fed to a committee uh, with a, a copy of the response that we've received uh, and raise it as a question to I believe it's waste and management committee uh, and see where that goes and let them have a look at it and discuss it because it, it brings into attention and to address as you've suggested about contracts and service level agreements and, 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 and all the issues that there are there um, because this has now slipped six months uh, yeah if they are going to remodel that junction when's that going to be and when will the road be made safe to all, all the users modeling, that has to go out to the public to yeah. have them surveyed of whether what yeah. they're going to do and that's I know all these timescales have to be brought into consideration. I bet we're still sat here this time next year with nothing done. I don't think so, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Could, could I ask members if, if that's satisfactory or they want anything added to that? Sorry, sorry Lois, I didn't bring you in. Sorry. No, it's, it's fine, Chair. Just to add on what's been said, obviously I agree with everything that's been said, and it is incredibly uh, frustrating as a local councillor when you know you can't make progress on these things. Um, specifically in relation to Whole House Lane um, and, and coming down there, um, the, the most frustrating part is that Amy won't, as I understand it, won't schedule in the, the work until that, that payment's been made. So, you know, it's not a case of it will be done when payments being made, it, it will only get scheduled in, as I understand it, when that, that payment's being made. So it could be quite a length of time once the payment's being made till it being um, till it being done. And that's that's incredibly frustrating. In terms of the what's I've been told from Yorkshire Water having contacted them uh, for the delay in them making the payment, they're saying that they need uh, an engineer's report to um, properly um, review their liability split uh, with Amy and make sure that's right from um, an auditory uh, point of view and a regulatory point of view. So I am keep, you know, I'll keep pushing them to make sure that that report is done as soon as possible and it meets their um, requirements. Um, but you know, as I'm saying, it, it, it needs to be. Um, you know, it needs to be done. The payment needs to be made, and, and it needs to be scheduled in. But it's it's a it's just one of a series of um, of problems in the in the area. But that that particular case is one that's been going on, as residents here will know, for um, for far too long, both in terms of the initial water issue and now with the resurfacing. Julie, yeah, just to follow on from what Lewis has said, I understand the engineer. The engineer's report has been done and they've agreed a 60-40 split, so it just needs now the payment to be made and then everything should should get going along, which is why I think it's incumbent on us as your local councillors um, to make sure we contact our senior officers to um, push for that to happen so that we aren't waiting eons and eons for this work to be done. I think the information that I was given was that the 60 40 split has been agreed as Julie was saying uh, but they now need to review that from an auditory point of view and a regulatory point of view because of the sum involved um, they have to make sure that it meets their um, their requirements and the information I was given I think a couple of weeks ago was that even though the split has been made they're still waiting for that confirmation um, you know in terms of the amount that, that they need to get done so that's why I was told that the, pay, the payment 
um, has been has been delayed. But um, but yeah, I'll keep chasing for for an update on that. Thank you. If we can move on, I've um, got two questions from members of the public. Adam, if you'd like to come forward, use the mic and just introduce yourself and let's have the question. Um, yeah, Adam Hurst, I'm a parish councillor and a link to the LAC, but I'm just here as a member of the public. Uh, I'd like to apologise. It fell off my radar and I should have put a, a, a written question. It is a very quick, a very quick one, though. Um, and I thought, really, this was as good a place as any because we've got certainly some West Ecclesfield councillors here. Um, there was a promise made. There was a lot of work done over the last 18 months or so about resurfacing of a road in West Ecclesfield. And the, eventually, uh, after a meeting of the relevant committee, uh, a promise was made, and I've been assured that the, although unadopted road, that some resurfacing, for various reasons, would happen on Morton the Close. I've actually chased up uh, people, officers in the council, uh, two or three times now, just to ask for a date when that work is likely to be done and not had anything back. So I was just wondering if there was anything that the councillors here might be able to do just to get an answer so that we can actually give the people of Mortimerly Close some information. They've certainly had letters saying that the work will be redone, but this has been a, an issue that's been going on, I think, since 2016. So I'm really just here to chase up some progress. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, we have had a res response from, from Highways. It will be, it'll be undertaken. Uh, and it will take one day. I think the road will be shut. I'm not quite sure when it will be, but it's on the agenda to be done in the very near future. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it, it comes under uh, the community's parks and leisure because it leads to one of the leisure centres. Um, I have seen paperwork. It is imminent. I can't give you an exact date, but I will find out and reply to you. Well, I'll certainly get you an answer before the next lag. Let's believe it will be in July, but I will get it. Anyone else? We, we have a notification that says the road will be closed uh, for one day and it will be resurfaced. Thank you. Want to come another question? Yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, we'll bring it to you, yeah. Thank you. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, my name is Dorothy Whitaker. I'm one of the committee members of the Friends of Fox Glen Park in Deep Car. Um, I've just noticed I did send an email to Philippa today, but apparently Philippa's not working, so that's why you've not got my question. But having just seen this, I'm not allowed to name officers or members of the council. Evening, thanks. You just, yeah, you just roughly say what I think we're aware of. Right. We're aware of your question. Yeah, right, okay. Um, yeah, our local community and a lot of the children at school and the town council and the councillors um, of the area have been working very hard since last summer to get funding to get the park redone. Um, we got £20,000 from the participatory budget from Stocksbridge Town Council were voted in, which we're very pleased about and the equipment was all ordered earlier on this year. Um, Parks Department have also um, provided us with new swings for there and have redone some of the landscaping in the park, which sort of we're very grateful for. But it's taken a long time to actually get the climbing frame done. We were expecting that to be done early spring. And with uh, Councillor Riddler's hard work over the last two weeks and meeting lots of people, um, she eventually got a date for that to be done this week. And they arrived this morning to do it, whereupon we were um, then informed that there was a visit from another member of the, uh, one of the other departments in the council who said that the culvert was going to be uh, repaired and therefore they had to stop working. It turns out there was a lot of uh, crossed wires and all of the rest of it, which, again, I really want to thank Councillor Riddler for sorting this out today. 
and it transpires that um, this department are going to be checking the culvert for a couple of days, but then the climbing frame can be go, go back up again, which is not what we were led to believe earlier on this morning. Um, but talking to the other members of the committee, the officers of the committee, were really concerned that this promised date now that the uh, contractors can put this climbing frame up on Monday is going to be withheld. Not withheld, sorry, actually carried out. Um, Councillor Riddler has spoken to them and come up with this, which is great. But we're just trying, because we've had so many promises and broken dates and things like that, we want to know this climbing frame is actually going to be put up on Monday so that the children can start to use it. I'll let Janet come in and see if she can enlighten us all. Thank you, Janet. Right, my pleasure. Um, thank you for bringing up that question, Dorothy. And um, as you say, the, the friends of Fox Glen Park and the wider community have done tremendous work in raising money for this equipment and I can fully understand everybody's shock this morning when the moment that they started to do the digging to install it, the work ceased. Um, as you've quite um, explained very well already, what happened in fact was because of in parallel to this, some ongoing issues about flooding in that area, somebody happened from a, a, a different team, a, the capital delivery team, happened to be passing and was concerned that it, you know, equipment appeared to be going up uh, when there was the possibility of doing some investigative work. And so with the best of intentions, I think, to, so that because they were concerned that this may affect this, they had asked the contractors to pause work for a couple of days. Well, of course, as, these things, as happens with these things, sometimes when things get passed along, things get lost in translation. And I think after a couple of hours, the, the scenario had developed into the whole part was going to be dug up and goodness knows what was going to happen. But yes, I got to the bottom of it, took it up with a lot of you know, people at a senior level, and there will be at some point some um, ground investigations done on the park, but that's not going to happen now because we've all done, as you've said, a lot of work in trying to make sure that this um, equipment is installed now before the summer holidays. So I have had an absolute guarantee um, that the work will recommence on Monday and that the equipment will be installed as planned prior to the school's breaking up, which is what everybody wants. In terms of the, um, the groundwork examinations, which will at some point have to be done, the plan is, and it, I think it always had been, but this bit had got sort of lost with everybody's quick reaction to, to what had happened, any work to happen in future, whether it be for ground investigations or, or anything in the, in the much more distant future in terms of tackling any flooding problem, will be undertaken with plenty of consultation and notice for, to, to all stakeholders in the community. Everybody will know that's going to happen. Nobody's going to turn up overnight and start digging, uh, digging it up and, and ripping out equipment. So we are back to a situation where the equipment will be installed. It will start on Monday. It will be done. And, you know, now that we've, we know the people to talk to, now that we know all the different fact things that are going on, well, you know, I'll, I will make sure, and I know uh, Julie will too, that, that um, you know, everybody is kept informed of what's happening. And I think it's credit due to the vigilance of people in actually flagging up the, the, the thing that, that it was happening, you know, what happened this morning, that meant that we could actually intervene and turn it around pretty quickly before the contractors had got a chance to go and start on another park somewhere else in Sheffield, which is, of course, what we didn't want them to do. They are coming back. They will start on Monday. I'm sorry that was quite a lengthy answer, but there, there were quite a lot of circumstances surrounding this scenario and a lot of things leading up to why, what made it so important that, that we took, took control of what was happening. So I hope that that answer is satisfactory and that you, you know, that guarantee um, will be accepted by yourselves. I've had every um, reason to, you know, to, to, to trust the people that have given me that promise. 
uh, because it has come at, from a you know, very senior level. So thanks for the question. I hope that answers it, but if there's anything else, please do, uh, do help me. That's great, Janet. Thank you. And can I just say that as a group, we really do appreciate having been supported by the three councillors, uh, Julie and Lewis and Janet in the area, and Dave Luck as well. You've given us a lot of support with that, so thank you very much. Thank you, Janet. On Monday, could you tell us either way that it's happened? <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be it happening on Monday. If not, please, please contact us either way. Yeah. I don't think it will slip my mind, but thank you for mentioning yeah, that. Yeah, but uh, just let David and myself know that it's happening. That would be really useful. Thank you. Also, we can jump up and down again. <laughs> thank you. Moving on then to Agenda Item 7, which is the North Local Area Committee Budget 2324. Uh, Dave Lutz is going to give us a brief presentation about how we're going to detailed proposed spending. Yep, thank you. I'll move around here, I won't be able to see anything, which isn't very helpful. Um, so, just a, a, a couple of quick points of update, uh, and then we'll move on to a, th a couple of things about the budget. Um, so, just wanted to let you know that uh, the LAC was able to support eight coronation funded events um, a couple of months ago. So, lots of lovely things there, Chapel Town, High Green, Stannington, and uh, Stocksbridge, lots of different events that we were able to support this year. So, thanks to the groups that, that put those on. Um, just as well to let you know, if you're representing a community group, that the ward pot is open. These are the sums that are available for the different wards. Um, if you want any information about the ward pot, please do talk to us as a team or any of your councillors, but just to let you know, um, that's open. Um, so, uh, and the other thing wanted to let you know is that we have launched a LAC survey um, saying, is there a big thing that you think would make a big difference in the North? So what we're going to do when we finish the formal items is we're going to invite you to come through to the library area where we're going to have some breakout time where essentially we'll get the opportunity to hear from all of you sat around tables about your views uh, of the area. But we do have an online survey. We've got a mix of talking to you face to face, going to other places, um, as we did at the weekend in Eastbridge and Stocksbridge, um, but also that's online for people that would rather do that that way. Um, what we'll do with all that information is look at it over the summer, bring it back to our next meeting at Ecclesfield Primary at the end of September, and um, that gives the, the members the opportunity to review their priorities but also to see whether through those conversations ideas come forward of different projects that we, that we want to fund. So in terms of the budget, um, we have a delegation, I have a delegation as an officer um, to agree spending under £5,000 so that we can get on with things in between the meetings. So one thing just to report back from last year's budget that happened after the, um, the meeting took place in February was that we agreed uh, a sign in Stannington to alert people that there is a crossing ahead because of an incident that happened. So that has happened. The other things that we've agreed out of this year's budget are a slow marking on Hagstons Road, um, a site visit to look at some issues at Warncliffe side, and some repairs to uh, the tapping rail in Loxley, which is an initiative where as people walk along the path which takes you to Bradfield, it's actually something that I believe David Blunkett was very involved in many years ago, where people who are partially sighted can actually tap along the rail in order to be able to uh, safely use that path. So those are some very practical things that we've done um, already. Um, the, uh, the two areas of recommendation for your uh, councillors this year for, for the committee, the first is that we, we have a budget this year, as we did last year, of £100,000, um, which was described in the budget amendment as a, as a budget of £25,000 per ward. Um, the recommendation to the LAC is that, as we did last year, that is treated as an area-wide budget, so that if we think there are area-wide projects that we want to take forward, we can do that. And if we think that there are things that make more sense at a local level, we can do that. So there is that degree of flexibility around the budget to work towards uh, needs in the area and projects that members feel are viable to take forward. So that's the first element of recommendation. The second is to um, 
launch two funds that voluntary sector groups could apply into. Um, your members last year made clear that they wanted to focus on um, areas and people where there was greatest need. And so the, the, there is a proposal that we have a fund around that um, which says that if, for example, there are groups working on cost of living or social isolation, which is the big issue as we know in the area because of um, its distance out from the town centre or other areas of need, uh, people will be able to apply into that. Alternatively, if people have an idea of how to do something better or, or differently, so I know a group, for example, that's looking at community transport because we know the many issues we have around transport, there would be an opportunity for groups to bring forward a new idea of how they think they could do something. So with both of those funds, there would be a total sum of £25,000. Groups could apply for up to £5,000, and that would be on the basis that we look to launch that next month and then through the autumn uh, each month look at um, bids that have come in. Um, if we then find that either of those funds are undersubscribed, then that money will then come back in again, to look for different projects um, fitting in with the priorities that the LAC has already identified. So those are the two areas of recommendation. The first is to uh, treat the budget as an area-wide budget, and the second is those two um, funding pots. So those are the proposals uh, for the LAC budget tonight. Thank you, Dave. Any comments from members? Richard. Thank you, Chair. Um, under 1.3 uh, expenditure, the two ideas, <coughs> excuse me, you talk about North Area Lack or yeah, North Lack Greatest Needs Fund, and you talk about a criteria for awarding these grants, and you, one of these is areas of deprivation, and you list High Green and Stocksbridge. I'm assuming that isn't an exhaustive list because there are other places within the lack. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that, that was indicative. So we know, for example, in Lower Stannington, again, that we have areas, and they're just examples that we know that um, there are areas of deprivation that can sometimes be missed in the north. We know there are other areas of need as well, I think. Men mentioning social isolation as a need that is maybe not always as obvious to other people that don't know the area, but absolutely. There will be more detail worked up in terms of um, before those funds are put out, so that, that, that was just indicative. Anyone else? So the report contains recommendations for approval by members. Uh, are we all in agreement that this goes forward? Show hands, please. I think that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jen, number eight is the Stocksbridge Towns Fund update, uh, and Amanda Holmes will give us a, a, an update. A clicker? <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Amanda Holmes. I'm the Communications Officer for the Stocksbridge Towns Fund. I work in the library, or what used to be the... Um, uh, Citizens Advice Bureau office just next door to the library two or three days a week so if you represent a community group in Stocksbridge you want to meet with me or you want me to come and talk to your group please make an appointment or just pop in and see me and I'm um, very happy to engage with any groups that haven't already engaged with I hope I've got around most of them though so Stocksbridge Towns Fund for those who don't know I hope you do all do know it's a 24.1 million pound investment uh, delivering 10 projects across Stocksbridge. One of the key um, priorities has been to regenerate and better connect to the town centre. Um, I hope everybody agrees that we, we had this amazing investment in Fox Valley seven years ago and the town centre does look a little bit like the poor relative in comparison to that and that's certainly come through all our engagement and, and local consultation and people are very keen to see investment in that part of the town so that's a real key priority for the town's fund board uh, we're also looking at developing skills and education and we're working with northern college on del delivering some learning back in stocksbridge for adults and post 16 uh, those of you old enough like i am that can remember we used to have a college in stocksbridge years ago doing a variety of, of courses and of course times change but it would be nice to have some learning for adults back in the town um, and we're looking at delivering a phased approach that uh, the Townsman Board has taken the decision that the town centre 
it's, uh, it has to be the priority in terms of looking at putting the resource into those projects first. Uh, so just looking at the milestones, if we can... Uh, I'm determined not to say next slide, please, but just looking at the milestones, uh, we did get the money. It feels like we've been talking about this for a lot of uh, time, but we did actually only get the money in December. Uh, so although we were identified as Stocksbridge as one of the 101 towns back in 2019, the, the actual funding only came through um, in December. So we're, we're only six months into really properly uh, working on the, on the real detail of these schemes. Uh, we had some consultation roadshows uh, during 2021. Of course, the previous year when we were initially consulting was during COVID, so it's really nice to get in front of people and be able to have proper conversations about what they wanted to see in the town. Uh, so just moving along. So the town centre, cut, cut the beginning of that sentence off. <laughs> um, the town centre, the say, has always been a priority for the board and very much for the uh, community um, coming through the consultation. And there are four key, um, there are four key projects at the town centre. There's the library and community hub building. So that's a complete redevelopment of the current library. Uh, there's the placemaking and shopfront grant scheme. Um, and there's um, re better connecting the town, which means looking, looking at where the car parks are and, and making them better connected and signposting things better. If you come into Stocksbridge, you don't always know where things are. Where, where are the car parks? Where, where can I find the library? Where, so just looking at how the town is signposted and a community transport scheme, which is actually one of the smallest in terms of grant funding, but probably one of the most important um, of the project, certainly for the Townsman board members, which uh, Councillor Grocutt is a member of, because, because it, it's going to help get people around the town. A local hopper bus scheme that will help to connect to different areas of the town. So we're, we're, working, um, we're, working with the, um, we're working to get the bid out for people to apply to run that service, and uh, that should be happening in the next few weeks. Uh, so the next step for the town centre projects, uh, we need to complete the acquisition of all the properties. It's quite a complicated uh, site that we're putting together. Uh, we're engaging with businesses about the shopfront improvements. I've been doing that this afternoon, talking to the uh, business owners of the properties along the precinct. Um, we want to upgrade their shop fronts, but we need their permission to do that, of course, and the property owner's permission. So we're working through that. And then the submission of the planning application. We don't know when that will go in, and when that goes in, we'll have a better understanding of the time scales for when work will start. Um, conf confirm the temporary relocation of Stocksbridge Library, which is actually really important because we're going to be rebuilding the new library for at least 12 months, and it's important we keep that resource in the town, and, and I know that's something that when people pop to see me in the library, they always ask, and it's such a well-used provision in Stocksbridge, so um, we're, we're, we're going to make sure it won't be the size of the current library, but there will be a library service throughout the building work, and that's really important, and then work with the development development team to starting on site, appointing a contractor, making sure he understands the area, they understand the area, and, um, and getting on to delivering some of these projects. And then next, uh, just some, we've had some recent visuals done. I just thought I really wanted to show you these because I think the new building is going to look amazing, and that just shows, that's the same view, uh, just shows the comparison of what we've got at the moment, and hopefully two or three years' time, it will look like that. And again, with the precinct, just looking along there, I think, you know, there's some great little businesses there, but the, the street scene is tired, it needs an upgrade, and, and I think the architects have come up with some really nice ideas. So the other projects, uh, we, we've got some health and wellbeing projects that we're working on. Um, there's a skate park going into Oxley Park. Um, that's working, uh, that's moving ahead quite nicely, and we should be putting a planning application in, too, in, in soon. And there's phase two of the linkages um, of the footpaths and the little project to improve. If you use the leisure centre, you'll have seen the great work they've done on the infill area um, between the two parts of the building. And some, there's some money going towards upgrading that further so that outdoor space can be really well used. Um, there's a sports hub project, which is a package of projects, including a new cricket pavilion. And um, we're, we're working with the um, ECB 
to help us deliver that project with Stocksbridge Cricket Club. And Hydrotherapy Paul, we're looking to appoint a um, project manager in the next few weeks so we can move that scheme forward as well. Um, Governance. So, yes, who, who, is, who are the Towns Fund Board? Uh, well, Council Grocos is on the Towns Fund Board and a number of other people, including the MP. And we've just appointed two new Towns Fund Board members, um, two women who are going to represent the High Street. A lot of our focus over the next 12 months will be what, on what's happening on Manchester Road. So we thought it was really important that we had uh, a voice from Manchester Road who runs... Um, a business there. Well, we've got two voices. They're taking a shared role because they're both very busy women who run their own businesses. So uh, they're sharing a role on the board uh, to feed back directly the views of the businesses. So, um, so we hope that's going to work really well. And um, I think that's it. <laughs> Very happy to take any questions, and again, if you, if you do represent a local group and you want me to come and have a chat with your group, or you, know, you want to come and have a chat with me, I'm more than happy to organise that. Thank, thanks, Amanda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry if I rattled through. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, excellent. Just one question from me, really. What's the time scale? When, when's the end Ooh, finished? Do we know? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I know, well, I, I'm, I'm loath to give any time scales because we, until we get that planning application submitted, from there we, we'll really be able to set some time scales. We, we hope to, we, everybody is very keen to get this on site. Um, so as soon as I've got some clear time scales, I will be delighted to come back to the LAC and give you them. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any members wish to comment? Yeah, Lewis? Thanks, Amanda. I think what's really positive, particularly about the, um, you know, the town centre project and the regeneration of that, is that it's very sort of forward-looking, and um, you know, particularly with the street scene improvements and making it more accessible. I hope that that will, you know, really make, um, you know, Manchester Road area much more uh, attractive and somewhere people want to visit increase footfall and actually spur on even more investment in the in the years after and I think that's really what the Towns Fund is about. I very much see this as sort of the initial uh, phase to sort of stimulate further investment as things go on and I think the projects have been designed in a way where that can happen which I think is quite is very positive. I hope so and I think we've had some really exciting conversations with businesses today and it's nice to see their enthusiasm because you know they're dealing with day-to-day -day earning a living and to be able to you know say look in 12 months time we could be you know in this position is, is, is nice to be able to have those conversations. Thank you. Yeah. Does any members of the public wish to make a comment? Yeah. Well, then. Good. Got you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, thank you. My name's Helen. I'm a resident of Stocksbridge. I also work for Sustrans, just to declare that. So um, thank you so much for the presentation. It's really nice to see those lovely images, and I noticed cycling in most of those images, so that's, that's really good to see. Um, and you mentioned about better connections and bringing more people into the town and as someone who, who travels by walking and cycling I'm really aware how difficult it is already to get around the town and if you haven't got a car the pavements are really narrow, the junctions are really wide so if you want to cross the road um, there's traffic that's turning and it feels quite dangerous particularly if cars are shuffling down the hill as you're trying to cross um, and you mentioned um, about um, buses to help get around the town, but there's not much talk around what walking and cycling provision there's going to be, and also about the trails project. And I wondered if you could speak a little bit to that. Thank yeah, you. So, I'm so sorry. I didn't. I really did rattle through that. And, and yes, there is one, one of the towns from projects is the trails project. It was it, wa it was over budget. It is over budget, so it is currently under review, and we'll be taking a um, a report, I think, to the next towns fund board the, um, uh, about that. So, it, it, the, but there is still a trails project, but in, in its in the form. Um, it was in that that's being re reviewed at the moment so there will be an upgrade of cycling and that's that's very much part of what what the town's fund is keen to deliver okay so we'll 
there be any detail around which, like, how it's over budget? Um, and by I, I, sorry, I, I don't have any details, but if you want to have a chat with me afterwards, okay. I'm happy to take your details and see what information I can give to you, that if that's okay. Okay. So th thanks, Joanne. Thanks, Amanda. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. We'll move on then to Stratford Beach Town Council. And welcome, Mark Whitaker. Mark, are you the chair or the mayor? I am both the chair and the mayor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Chair. And uh, hello, everybody. Um, yes, I'd like to start by giving an overview of what Stocksbridge Town Council is and does. Uh, sometimes the work can feel a little invisible and we are getting many new residents to the area who will be entirely unaware of its functions. We are usually thought of as part of the group of parish councils that exist to the north of Sheffield. There is the small distinction, though, just noted, that whereas our, our council leader is also a mayor, so has quite a lot of ceremonial duties as well as chairing the council meetings. The other parish council just have uh, council leaders. We administer funds raised through sources such as the community infrastructure levy, rates and others. These funds are to be spent with the aim of improving the well-being, health and happiness of the people of Stocksbridge and to promote a sense of community. We give many grants, small and large, to local charities and run something called the Participatory Budget Scheme where the local people themselves vote for their priorities of, say, replacing the playground equipment we've just heard of or improving sports facilities or helping scouts groups. But remember, things such as road maintenance and street cleaning remain the preserve of the city council. We have eight town councillor positions, uh, only seven of them uh, filled at the moment. We usually meet twice a month, but each councillor will then stand on committees of local groups and charities as a council representative. This helps to ensure the efficient spending of funds and the recognising of areas where funds are most needed. Town councillors are volunteers and are not paid. We are advised and kept in check by our two extremely capable clerks, Teresa and Karen, who are also the clerks for Bradfield Parish Council. As an example of how much we rely on them, we were in the middle of a meeting when the news came through on our phones of the death of Her Majesty the Queen, we councillors all looked at each other and asked, what on earth do we do now? It was Teresa who produced a thick file and turned to the page marked, what councils do on the death of a monarch. <laughs> a good illustration of how we can help is an event that took place two days ago on Sunday. This was the Leisure Centre Summer Fair, organised by their very professional management team. The Leisure Centre is one of Stocksbridge's big success stories. It was saved from closure some years ago through a combination of town council and community initiative. That partnership continues. The town council gives a substantial annual grant but it is community volunteers who do much of the work to keep it going. Our influence is greater than our powers. For instance, a presentation was made to us by a railway enthusiast. He pointed out that the big development in the Valley Bottom could endanger any reopening of a rail link. We thought we had already preserved the area where a future station would need to be. But he pointed out that there also needed to be turning circle areas for buses meeting the trains and an access road big enough for these buses. Following communication with the city council, adjustments were made. We are a conduit for the population here 
through to the departments of the City Council. We receive many emails and approaches from people who have problems but don't know who to speak to to solve them. I was approached at the weekend by a lady who takes her grandchildren litter picking at Underbank Reservoir to encourage them to take pride in their environment. But with the warmer weather, the bushes are getting filled with broken glass bottles and disposable barbecues. She now thinks it's a bit dangerous for her grandkids to be doing this. I will forward her complaint to the relevant authority. We can also facilitate discussion. We have recently had two big public meetings at the Stocksbridge Town Hall to discuss the bad state of the buses out here. We have no powers to force private bus companies to do anything differently. But by bringing together such important players as Oliver Copper, the South Yorkshire Mayor, Miriam Case, Cates, our local MP, and one of the bosses of Stagecoach, as well as our city councillors, to speak and answer questions, we can hope to influence things. So, thank you for listening. I really think our work is important, and I welcome an opportunity to explain it to people. Please speak to me afterwards if you have anything you want to know about the Town Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, I'm pleased and proud that in the north we have the council, Stockbridge Town Council and the two parish councillors who add lots of value to our communities, uh, all three of them. Um, we're making a move, and we, we tried last year to, to move it forward. We started it off for the meeting of uh, the LAC and the Town and Parish Councils together. We've got one next month to see how we can work together. And as we've got the, the big ideas there, perhaps you know, yourselves and, other, and the two Parish Councils will be part of that big idea uh, and hopefully move something very big forward in the north. But thank you very much again. I think it's something for the other two parish councils to, to do at our next meetings. Thank you, Mark. Um, chair, could, could I just make one very quick? Yeah, yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Please, Chair. Just picking up on something that Mark said right at the very beginning, we have eight places on the Stocksbridge Town Council, and currently we only have seven councillors. So if you reside in Stocksbridge, Bolsterstone, or Deep Car, and you would like to get involved, then please do. There is a space, and we are looking to co-opt someone. Thank you, Chair. You've got the advert in now, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone in public wish to speak about Town Council? But, but thank you, it's, it's really good. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you next month. That virtually concludes the, the meeting. So the next meeting is on the 26th of September uh, in Ecclesfield Primary School, Ecclesfield. Um, but before we do go, and I hope you can stay, uh, Dave will explain what's going to happen next. Um, but we need you to participate if possible. Uh, still a bit early. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, so if, if you are able to stay for a few moments, um, further back along the corridor that you came along, there's a library to your left-hand side. And we've, we've just got some tables, we've got some flip chart paper. We'd love to hear your thoughts, what you like, what you don't like. Is there something you think would really make an impact? That's what we're asking people when we go to events. That's what we're asking people through the online survey. So if you're able to stay, then we'll, we'll maybe do that for about half an hour or so, and we, we'd love to have your input on that. Thank you. Thank you, Anisha. We will be around. The council will be around as well if you want to speak, and Mark and Amanda uh, to, to, to chat to. But thank you very much for attending. When you do, go have a safe journey home. Thank you very much.